tough tracks, four wheelers churn up the clay at the National Tractor Pulling Championship. And then we get back to basic tractor pulling with the spectacular smokers. Also, we look ahead to monster truck racing in 1991 on tough tracks. Today we're going to look at the Pro Stockers and we'll also be seeing the four-wheel drive truck. So we're going to be getting two of the top classes from Bowling Green and showing you all the great action today here on Tough Tracks. Now coming up also today on Tough Tracks, we wanted to spend some time talking about the possibilities of 1991 and the 1990 season that was just completed on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge for one Scott Stevens and the Auto Value Kings Front. Scott spent much of 1990 battling the Bigfoot camp, both verbally and on the racetrack. In the end, he ended up with a solid fourth place finish in TNT points. Chris Chapman spent some time with Scott Stevens. Scott, assess the 1990 racing season for us. Well, it was a typical race, and you know, it had its highs and lows for us. It was, looks like we've uh, created a relationship with Auto Value that uh, we're going to build on, and you know, for the future with that, and uh, Cobra Seats, and Wax Shop, and everybody, you know, all our sponsors are going to be around for the 91 season. And, uh, like I said, 1990 was just typical racing. I mean, there was a beginning of the year that we, you know, we were really tough, and, and we're coming here at the end, and you know, we're we're running way at the bottom right now. You know, we're just gonna have to get really geared up for next year. You know, it's just, so many people are competitive right now. You know, all top 10 trucks right here this weekend, and hey, there's no no slow truck on this circuit anymore. What would you say is the highlight for your team? I don't know. I think the highlights, I'd say, you know, just uh, running consistent, and we did for a while. Uh, in the wind up in Stafford when the truck was really hurt bad. You know, that was a highlight. You know, we weren't doing anything any different than we did any other weekend, but every pass the truck was getting faster and faster. So that was really you know, the, the only weekend that we really can 100% say the truck performed well. You know, and the bad thing is there was a lot of days that Scott Stevens was really off. You know, Louisville this year outdoors we were bad. And Richmond qualified quickest and go out first round hit the wall. You know, so I was off pretty bad in a lot of races, and it probably hurt us a couple of positions. But you know, overall, it was a good year. And, you know, we just got to realize that you know that's just part of the sport. Did we see any changes in King Front? Yeah, you know, it, it looked. You know, we thought we could come in here this weekend really geared up and run hard to be competitive, and just going you know, to do some minor changes to the truck. But you know, we realized it's going to have to be a whole new, you know, something like Big Twitter Carolina. Those are going to be the trucks of the future. And, that looks like what everybody's going to have to do to, you know, you're going to run and be consistent and competitive, but to be the world champion, you're going to have to have a new style truck. So we're, you're saying that you will have a new truck? You know, we're going to have to, you know, we've got the frame done. I, I don't think it'll be out at the beginning of the year, but by mid-year, you know, we're going to have to change. There'll be something new at the beginning, but, you know, we're just going to have to gradually jump into it because, you know, right now our technology is just not up to what the other trucks are, and you know, we're going to have to catch up with them. Do you believe you have a chance at winning the national championship next year? Yeah, you know, we ran really competitive with a truck that was hurt pretty bad from the crash last year in Kalamazoo. So, you know, you know we're not really worried about it. You know, we just need to lose a little weight, and, and Scott Stevens needs to go a little faster. Army here is that crash in Kalamazoo. Scott referred to still one of the most spectacular crashes in monster truck racing history. You know, but he came back the next night and ran the truck again. That's the type of competition these guys go after. As I remember, I think he came back in the next round and even won another race that night. Yeah. Scott, you're absolutely correct. He did come back in the next round, and the people loved it. That made him a crowd favorite. Speaking of crowd favorites, looks like a Chevrolet is coming out in the four-wheel drive division, Scott. We're ready to go at it here at Bowling Green, Ohio, in the TNT. National Tractor Pulling Championships here today, as it is three bears out of Virginia. This is Bob Smith. He'll be first up at Bowling Green. And as we've talked about, we've documented it so many times on Tough Track. When you go outdoors, the one event everybody wants to win is at the National Championships in Bowling Green, Ohio. Now we'll see who's got the stuff to get it done. Three Bears takes the first shot. Well, everybody that's anybody in the sport is in the staging lane right now. Bob Smith comes out with his old nemesis there, the bear himself. You know, it's an interesting story. That is the third of three bears. His son is the second bear. I guess Bob's the lead bear. Bob's mama bear. 
But right now, the big bear is the sled sitting behind that truck. He just hopes the forage is red hot as he tries to make it down the track. Here in Bowling Green, this is our test pull in the four-wheel drive competition. Notice a white box coming up on him. It's a good-looking pull, Army. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Oh. I think he's gonna like it. I think he'll accept it. 292 feet even for Bob Smith and three bears. Let's watch it again. It looked good all the way. Guy yeah, drew early in the field. We got the replay coming up. What we're looking for is how much dirt is he gonna pick up and throw? Very little, as you notice. And the other drivers noticed it too, so they're gonna be adjusting their chassis accordingly. Plus, it was a good straight run. Bob Smith and three bears with a good strong pull as our test puller at 200. 92 feet. Bob at 292. Not a bad run, but you know everybody's going to adjust to that run. Yeah. Uh, Scott thinks I should have just uh, dropped down about six or eight, but I'm not real familiar with driving it, and uh, I didn't understand what his signal was, and I, I, I took the pole. So the sled's official, you're the number one guy, and now you just sit and wait and let them take shots at you. Yeah, that's right. I, I think some of them can do better than that, but that's about as good as I can do the way the track is now. I'm just hoping the track doesn't get a whole lot better. Well, he's going to find out real quick where that pull stands in terms of if it'll hold up, because here comes the defending national champion, Tommy Holman and the Saturday Night Driller out of Wayne, Ohio. Now, Wayne, Ohio is not far from here, and, you know, the old rivalry of Ford versus Chevrolet goes on any motorsports. Holman's a, a sly old rascal. He's got a Ford, and we got a Chevrolet. Let's see what's going to do the better here. So whatever he goes home with, that brand won that day. Distance to beat, 292 feet, which will be just short of that full pull line that Tommy hopes anyway you'll be seeing him get to very quickly. On the one of the drivers that relies on the Jerry Janky horsepower out of San Antonio, Texas, working the left side of the track. Good ground speed, good RPM. The weight comes up on him. It's going to be on top. He didn't get it out, but it is good enough to be your new leader at 292 feet, 7 inches. Let's go to Chris Chapman, who's standing by with Manuel Marino, currently second behind Glenn Davis' Mr. Sparkle in the National Point Chase. Manuel, you're one point behind Glenn Davis in the Mr. Sparkle machine. How important is the victory here in Bowling Green, Ohio, this weekend? To win this, too, is very important to determine who's going to win the points with this weekend over here. How important is, is it to you personally? I drove all the way from Texas on a 24-hour trip, and I, we feel that we can win this week. What kind of strategy are you going to have? You've been out there looking over the track pretty good during the past couple of pulls. Are you going to line up in any particular place? What? We're going to the right of the track. I think it's a better track there than in the middle. We're just going to take a chance. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Now let's go back track side with Army Armstrong, who's standing by with Tommy Holman, your leader in the Saturday Night Driller. I mean, come on out here. The distance we're getting, 292.7. It looks like your problem's flip-flop. You've been having troubles with the chassis. The chassis stuck, but the motor was popping. But you're still the leader. Oh, yeah, we're, we got a real big engine here, 722 inches. We ran a little bit fat today. You know, the air isn't the best right here. I guess we just pulled out into the lead. Uh, we did a complete chassis change on the back half of this truck and tire change. And if you notice right there at the end, it just kept crawling. And that's all that saved us because between the, right, those fellows down there can't hear this right now, that left-hand side of the track isn't the place to go. It's going to have to be done over on the right-hand side. It's a little bit too wet on this side. Well, there you get the word from Tommy Holman and the Saturday Night Driller Army. It's coming up again. Yeah, but Marino's already figured that rascal out. He's already told Chris he's going to the right. Tommy Holman, Saturday Night Driller, sitting on top, at least for the moment. More of this competition coming up in just a moment. Tough Tracks is brought to you by the Nintendo Entertainment System. Nintendo, now you're playing with power. Back on Tough Tracks from Bowling Green, Ohio, and the National Tractor Pulling Championships, 
We're looking today at the four-wheel drive trucks, the big old smokers, the pro stock tractors, coming up a little bit later. The distance to beat is Tommy Holman's Saturday Night Driller at 292 feet, 7 inches. And the first one that we're going to see in this segment, take a shot at him, Jerry Weaver and the Kendall truck out of Thornville, Ohio, another Chevrolet. Well, Weaver goes over to the right side of the track. Holman, in the interview, told us the left is not the place to be. Manuel Marino, right after his interview with Chris a month ago, was walking around the pit area, coming to see to the Magnificent Seven. He is pumping himself up for his run. He'll be coming up later. And Kendall is not going. I don't know. He's not going to have enough to take the lead. It's a good pull for Jerry Weaver, but not enough to get the lead. It'll come in at 287 feet, 6 inches. So Kendall, at least for the moment, is going to find himself sitting in the number three spot behind the Saturday Night Driller and the Three Bears truck. Let's go back to Chris Chapman. She's standing by with Tennessee and puller Dottie Sanders. Donnie, make it some last-minute adjustments on the Tennessee and tell us about them. Well, it looks like the track's offering a lot of traction out there. I just dropped down a little bit on the gear ratio. I think I had just a little bit too fast a gear in it, and it's better to be a little safe maybe than sorry. We have yet to see a full pull. If anyone can do it, you can do it, or Glenn Davis can do it. Well, I hope so. I'm, uh, I got a new engine here. I ran it two, two runs, and it's, it's going to make a little change for me, but... Uh, I feel like the thing is going to run good. It ran good in Owensboro. It uh, wasn't good enough track for it, but it ran good. I just hope here on this good track it'll, it'll show what it's got. Out of Louisville, Kentucky, Jim Lyons brings out a GMC truck now. This is Stitches. The truck is owned by a company out of, located on the Kentucky-Tennessee border that manufactures fashion blue jean wear. And they sell it all over the world, but for a hobby, these guys go pull and they pick Jim Lyons to carry their colors. However, Lions goes to what a lot of people are saying it's a bad side of the track. Doesn't look that way to me right now. Now it's going away, Scott. Yeah, he didn't get there at all. The distance for Jim Lyons is going to be well short of our leader, Tommy Holman, and the Saturday Night Driller. Stitch just comes in at 280 feet, 2 inches. So, Jim Lyons will be, frankly, probably pretty far back in the pack. Certainly not in the top three or four here today at Bowling Green. Guarantee you one thing, everybody watch that run knows the right side is not the right side. Coming up next, as we see the finish of the replay for Stitches that didn't quite get there, will be the man trying to take over the national points lead, Manuel Moreno and the Yellow Rose of Texas out of Seguin, Texas. I told you he's been walking around the whole pit area all afternoon long, coming the theme to the Magnificent Seven. He's trying to psych himself up. If there's going to be a bonsai run in Bowling Green, it'll come out of this truck at this time. Marino is ready for what anybody has to throw at him. The question is, can the truck live to a 300-foot shot on this tough play? You know, we talk about all the big names, all the big guns here in Bowling Green. Certainly, Manuel Moreno, one of the biggest names in this form of the sport, has won virtually everywhere, and he wants this one very badly here today at Bowling Green. Well, like you said, he drove 24 hours to get here. you got to be serious to do that. He runs a Jerry Janke engine, 700 plus cubic inches. Janke just builds those big mountain motors. I don't know what cubic inch, but I'll guarantee you, it's big, it's bad, and it's 300 feet away from a full pull. Going to have to get it past 292 feet, 7 inches. Here comes Manuel Moreno. Moreno running the short width on the motor. Let's see what's going to happen. It doesn't sound good. No, not at all. Not at all. He torched the motor. About a 35. Scott. They must have thrown a rod at Army Armstrong. You talk about $35,000. You may be adding to that his share of the season point fund because this very costly for Manuel Moreno and the Yellow Rose of Texas. Boy, that is a tough break. That 24 hours is going to be real long going home, Scott. Oh, what a terrible, terrible break for one of the great guys in the sport, Manuel Moreno. I don't know if we'll see anything that'll tell the story until the end here on the Yellow Rose. Watch the bottom of the truck if you see any kind of liquid coming out. There it is. Boom. Bang the rod out of it right there. The Yellow Rose of Texas throws a rod and may have just thrown away any hopes for Manuel Moreno to win the national championship. Manuel, a 275-foot run, but an awfully expensive run here at Bowling Green. Get through a rod. What? What's that going to cost you to get back? Well, I got to go to Texas, spend another motor, but... Talk about $35,000, $40,000 there? At least $30,000. 
<laughs> he, at least 30,000 just goes on with it, doesn't it? <laughs> Better he than me. <laughs> First that. Okay, now we told you a moment ago about Tommy Holman. This is the second truck, and what kind of truck is it, Scott? It's the big Ford. Roger Crawford and the Bandit coming out now, and he will try to knock Holman's Chevrolet off the top spot. Crawford out of Wayne, Ohio, as is Tommy Holman. Nice easy start. Let's see if he's got what it takes. Trying to go down the middle. What's going to happen? Now he's starting to work his way a little bit to the left. The weight comes up. The ground speed does not seem to be there, Scott. He's close, but I don't think he's going to have enough to get past Tommy Holman's distance. It's going to be 288 feet, 5 inches for the Bandit and Roger Crawford. The boss stays on top, Scott. Yeah, absolutely. Tommy Holman's still your leader. Well, a guy who's going to be coming after him is Glenn Davis, who's with Chris. 297 is the distance to beat at this point. We've yet to see the Tennessean run. Do you think you're going to be in there and be able to beat that? Yeah, my truck's running real strong right now. The Sparkle Corporation doing me good, and uh, I'm leading the Red Man points right now, so I'm going to go out here and try to take that lead today. We're going to find out if Tommy Holman's Saturday Night Driller can hold on to the lead when we come back. Douglas, Army Armstrong, Chris Chapman back with you at Bowling Green, Ohio. And almost halfway through the four-wheel drive truck bully competition, Tommy Holman, Saturday Night Driller, is your leader. The Three Bears, Chevrolet, and Bob Smith is second. And Roger Crawford, the Bandit Ford, runs third. But here comes a big, bad Ford out of the state of Georgia, Tony Osteen and the Georgia Rebel. Tony has experimented a lot of time with different engine combinations and everything but for this particular event he just went back to pure muscle horsepower runs 180 degree crank listen to the sound of the engine almost sounds like a two cycle engine he really screams it but the power is not there today scott now the georgia rebel does not have it on this day at the bowling green wood county fairgrounds the distance for tony osteen will be 274 feet nine inches well short of the lead distance that Tommy Holman put down. Once again with the Georgia Rebel Four. He's working the right side of the track. Good straight run. The horsepower is just not there. Now, that could be due to selection, a wrong selection of a gear in the transfer case. Maybe the engine was making power for what it had. Tony Osteen comes up short. He's with Army Armstrong. Tony, we checked the scoreboard. 274-9, but why did you go to the right side of the track? Just looked like the thing to do. Was it? Yeah, you had your truck running right. I think it done pretty good. Okay, what's wrong with the truck? I don't know. It just missed. I don't know if it's fuel or something other. We just didn't have. We just didn't make a good run. Obviously, not real thrilled. Tony Osteen out of West Green, Georgia, fierce competitor, and is not there today. Robert Golahan, the Golahan Ford, comes up as another Virginia-based truck out of Manassas, Virginia. You know, we were talking earlier about Jerry Janky and all these engine builders. Well, you look on the left front of his truck, you see the name Lee Edwards. Now, anybody that followed drag racing a few years ago, they know who Lee Edwards is. He will make you a whole bunch of horsepower. You lay the dollar bills the next counter, he'll pass horsepower to you. Let's see what Golahan's done. It looks good. This kid is not afraid of anybody. Edwards beat Janky. We're going to find out right now the battle of the engine builder. Chevrolet on top four going after him. Ohio on top. Virginia going after him. It looks good. He's close. Now there's the distance to beat. 292 feet, 7 inches. How? Oh, look at him. Six inches short. Oh, what a run. 292 feet, one inch. He'll be six inches out of the lead. And the Golahan Ford sits second. And boy, Tommy Holman gets the two-step around that run. Yeah, but you know the first guy to go out and look at this vehicle is the pulling that's coming up later. Glenn Davis was on the finish line into the track watching Golahan run. Wait, it's not over, Scott. Typical Bowling Green finish coming up. It looks like they're really ganging up around the 300. Your leader still is Tommy Holman in the Saturday Night Driller. And uh, Tommy may just turn around and not even watch this run and just listen to the crowd because he knows this is one of the guys that figures to take a super shot at him. Donnie Sanders and the Tennessee in uh, Music City, USA. You know, we talked a moment ago about the, the Lee Edwards engine combination and Jerry Janky and all this stuff. Now, Jerry Janky has about five or six trucks that he's built the engines for in this event. When he landed at the airport, I imagine there's about five or six guys waiting to bring him to this racetrack to make sure he got here good and safe. 
Well, Donnie Sanders has got himself one wild new paint job, doesn't he? That's wild. Oh, that's a new fiberglass body. It's really a good-looking setup. Credit to the people that paint that truck. Plus, when you use a fiberglass body, it lets you take some of the weight and move it someplace else where it'll help you. In this case, he hung all the weight that he took out of the body on the nose, under that big Chevrolet bow-tie front bumper. The sled will hold the back down. The horsepower is in the middle. The weight on the front could be the key to this class win today. And we'll find out if the combination works right now for Donnie Sanders and the Tennessean. Again, the distance to beat is 292 feet, 7 inches. Tommy Holman set that in the Saturday Night Driller earlier in this class. We're looking for the green flag on the track. We've got it now for Donnie Sanders and the Tennessean. Running down the left sideline, Scott. Good straight shot, he's looking good. Wayne comes up on Jesse Sarkabouse just a little bit. Whoa. A sensational pull as he has taken the lead. Donnie Sanders almost pulled it out of here. 299 feet, four inches for the Tennessean. Everybody that loves Chevrolet was leaving, trying to get him on the other side of the 300 foot mark. Not to be the case, but he just strong arm that puppy all the way to the other end. Donnie Sanders with a sensational pull as he takes it just eight inches short of a full pull. Sensational run for Donnie Sanders, the Tennessean out of Nashville, and a lot of Chevrolet people here in Bowling Green, they loved it. There's Donnie, Army's going over to talk to him. All right, boy, the family's gotta be happy right now. 299 and four, you're the guy they're going after. Oh boy, I tell you, I went back to Army just for a pull. I changed gears, I was nervous, couldn't hardly get it started. I changed gears, if I hadn't, I'm sure just been in trouble, cause I mean, it just was all it would handle. You think any of the other guys are going to notice what you did and come back and do the same thing? Because right now, you've got these guys covered big time. Well, I don't know. I just uh, got to sit out here and hope that I can hang on to this first place. And uh, boy, we sure happy with it. Let me check with this guy down here. Who's the best four-wheel drive truck in America? We are. <laughs> Let's take a look at the standings up to the minute. Your leader is Donnie Sanders in the Tennessee, and almost a full pull. But coming up. Glenn Davis, the current national point leader, will bring out the Sparkle Corporation and go after the Tennesseans. Coming into that last break, we mentioned Glenn Davis. We did not at all mean to slight this man because this is another guy who could take it out of here in a heartbeat. Former national champion Howard Lewis, the high roller, the Chevy out of New Carrollton, Maryland. So everybody's watching the track. I'm anxious to see where Lewis is going to put the slant. He spots everybody's watching the guy in front. More power, it comes from Lee Edwards. Chassis, the high roller team, they proven they can do it. He goes right down the middle. I don't know if that's the place to be, Scott. Long and down, he's close but no cigar. The high roller, a good pull, but not enough. It'll be 292 feet, 10 inches for Howard Lewis and the high roller. We'll look at it again, and it looked like a pretty good pull, just in the wrong spot. Yeah, and I don't understand why it went down the middle. We're going to watch the rest of the guys. For those of you not familiar with this sport, remember the distance Scott's given you is from the front of the sled. Location of the truck has nothing to do with it. It's where that sled stop is where they measure to, right, Scott? Exactly, and look at this, Army. The guy we figured to be the favorite here today, Glenn Davis and the Sparkle Corporation, is also going right into the middle of the track. This surprises me, because Glenn Davis, even though he's young in years, is probably one of the most intelligent drivers in the sport as far as picking a good line on the track. I believe he's missed it. I think left or right. The middle, I don't think, is the way to go. Now, I don't know. We're going to find out here in just a minute. He, for all intents and purposes, has to take it out of here to get the lead. The lead distance of Donnie Sanders and the Tennessean is just eight inches short of a full pull. That's very little room to get in front of him without taking it out. All right, he rolls the Sparkle Corporation Chevrolet. Let's see what can happen. In the middle, right place, wrong place. Oh, he isn't even going to be close. He's not even close. A terrible disappointment for Glenn Davis. Wonder if he missed the gearing or what? And again, you've got to re-ask the question, why the middle of the track? Army's going to, you're going to get a chance to talk to him hopefully in a minute because that, that just was not a Glenn Davis pull. No, not at all. Well, look at the crowd. They're almost stunned. They are. You know, you expect so much from a guy like Glenn Davis 
and it just wasn't there on that pull here. He went to the middle of the track, and it didn't work. He's coming over to you, Army, and, you know, you got to ask him the question. What happened? Glenn, a lot of the speculation was the win. Your distance comes up 271.11. The win was going to come in the last four trucks in the class. You're one of them. Something just wasn't right on the run. Yeah, I just put this motor in here. I'm having a few problems getting the fuel mixture right, and uh, I'm going to go back and do some wrenching tonight, and I might even bring my other motor back out here and try to win this thing tomorrow. Why did you go to the middle of this class? You've always impressed me with being able to read a track. Why did you go to the middle? Well, uh, on the middle over, on the side over down there, I didn't like the start line. Donnie dug some big holes there, so I was going to move over, and I planned on coming down towards the middle, the center, but uh, it was running so bad, it didn't really make a difference. Let's go now to our final competitor in this class, Dwayne Baytag from San Antonio, Texas, the STP pulling team, the last one with a shot to take that big trophy away from Donnie Sanders. Dwayne's relatively new in this sport, but he's teamed up with a name that everybody's familiar with, that being the STP Corporation, involved with Ricky Smith and drag racing, and of course, the man himself, Richard Petty and NASCAR racing. Let's see what they can do in the sport of professional truck pulling. The STP Corporation, red, white, and blue, Chevrolet, going after the leader in Bowling Green. Here comes STP, as you mentioned, one of the original motorsport sponsors, no question about it. They've been winning a long time, and they're teamed up with the Wayne's Day Tag. Can they get it out there? Got a good run going, starts to work to the left. Horsepower stays up on the engine. Whoa, that was a good run. Excellent pull. It may be second. Now, to get second, he'd have to get over 292. He does. 293 feet, 11 inches. Excellent pull. And you can see they're telling Dwayne Baytag, hey, you got second. Mike Speller's smiling because Dwayne's got to be happy with it. STP will finish second to Donnie Sanders and the Tennessean. Howard Lewis is high roller third. Tommy Holman, Saturday Night Driller fourth. And then Robert Golahan, Golahan Special, rounds out the top five. This week's Power Drive is brought to you by Nintendo, bringing cheers from the crowd at every turn. Whenever you feel the need to show what you're made of, reach for Nintendo. Now you're playing with power. And the Power Drive, Donnie Sanders getting the victory in the Tennessean. You're going to look at that winning pull once again on the Nintendo Power Drive. It was perfection out of Music City, USA. Don't go away, we're coming back with the Pro Stock Tractors here on Tough Tracks. We've been able to take a look today at the modified four-wheel drive trucks. Well, this is where tractor pulling started from, where these guys evolved from the Pro Stock tractors and, of course, the Super Stocks and the other stock tractors. We're going to look at the Pro Stock competition today. And, Army, we're picking it up in the pull-off. Already 16 tractors have gotten in the wall. Let me tell you something. These old boys that pump out that black smoke play hardball. They're used to playing in the dirt. They know how to get the power to stick. 16 of them made it out the first round. Let's see what's going to happen. Looks like Shotgun Red's going out. Now, you got to remember, in this class, everybody pulls for their favorite. Whatever you drive on the farm, that's what you're pulling for in Bowling Green. And right now, international people get their turn to stand and shout. It's a lot of big red against the big green. We'll see the big green of the John Deere's a little later, but we open it up with a big international shotgun red and John Wilkins out of Fresno, Ohio. Keep an eye on the smoke. It's a little bit chalky, starts to dial it in when it gets real good black, he'll roll it right now. Maximum horsepower, wait a little bit louder than those. He's looking good again. Listen to the crowd. These people are pumped. Back to back, full pull for shotgun. John Wilkins, if he's going to get beat, they're going to have to pull a third time against him because he has taken it out twice. You know, these vehicles, even though they don't make that real crackling-type horsepower, there's something about them that I just love. It's almost like they move the earth instead of moving the sled. Army, here comes John Wilkins, the shotgun red. All uh, right, you're done exactly what you came to Bowling Green is what it's all about. You're making full pulls, but these other guys keep coming after you. Can they do it, too? Hey, they're going to have to pack our lunch to get out here this time. We, we had a good run. Uh, Yali, I think, 
it's going to do it. We're pulling for Pioneer. Oh, hey, Scott, I love it. They got a factor look. This guy, these boys are serious, aren't they? I guarantee it, Harmony. You're down there with him, and he just obviously thinks he's got it. But there are 15 that are going to come after him. We talked about the big green guys. Here's one of them. Gang Green, it's called. The John Deere out of Tuscola, Illinois. Lance Little. You know, we were talking a moment ago about the different colors and everything. That's kind of like the Ford people, Dodge people, Chevrolet people, what have you. But in this particular sport of the agriculture industry, you pull for the kind of track you use in the field. Everybody wants to go out with bragging rights. Let's see what Gang Green can do for the green machine. He's got to take it out before another pull-off. He's not going to get there. Lance Little, well short, 265 feet, 5 inches. That's the distance for Gang Green. And Lance Little, the Illinois powered, or the John Deere from Illinois. We're going to look at it one more time. Just not there for him. Still, Army, having only seen Shotgun Red and what was obviously an awesome pull from him, this may not be a bad pull. We'll put it in perspective as others come out with the new weight on the sled. Now, Shotgun Red said in the interview, he said, if you're going to beat me, you better pack your lunch to do it. So he knows it was a super shot. Can the Titan do it? What we're looking at here is the tires on these tractors. I want you to notice the lug. That's the part that actually bites into the clay. And notice how short they are in the middle, Scott. We're going to watch him, Army. It's the big green John Deere out of Alliance, Ohio. Mike Nam and the Titan. Speaking of the tires, a lot of people think that the thicker the cleat that gets into the dirt, the, the more power you can put to the ground. That's not the case at all. The deeper it goes, the more clay it picks up, making you pull more weight. So every driver's got their own idea about what works with tires. What we're watching for right now is black smoke. When you see smoke, you see power in this place. Pro stock tractors from the National Tractor Pulling Championship in Bowling Green, Ohio. There's that black smoke, and let's watch the Titan. that Shotgun Red has put down. Titan comes in at 271 feet and 5 inches. So the Titan at the moment sits in the number 2 spot, but still lots of pro stockers to come. Can any of them get near Shotgun Red? On the TNT All-American Pulling Series, Tough Tracks bringing it to you. I'm Scott Douglas with Army Armstrong and Chris Chapman at the granddaddy of the outdoor pulls, the 24th annual National Tractor Pulling Championships from Bowling Green, Ohio. Your leader, as we're into the pull-off in the Pro Stocker, is Shotgun Red, who so far has been the only tractor who backed up a full pull in the opening round with another full pull here in the pull-off. Another John Deere. This is Scott Snyder and the Road Farmer from Edison, Ohio. Boy, a black smoke. Showing you the horsepower there. A little bit lighter than those kind of timmy towing. But Shotgun Red is just that. He's got everybody seeing Red because nobody, they're not even getting close to this guy today. Nobody has come within 25 feet of the full pull distance on their second run. Road Farmer at 261 and 10 inches obviously is well short of that 300 foot mark. Again, I want you to watch the balance on these tractors. See right there? It's kind of tippy toes right there. It's a good, these guys are making good runs. Shotgun Red just made an excellent run, Scott. He said, you may, you repeated it earlier, <laughs> they're going to have to pack their lunch. Looks to me like they better bring dinner and tomorrow's breakfast along, too. They better have some Wheaties on that lunch. <laughs> Another big green one coming after him is Mike Linder. And you know, the international fans are just in hog heaven right now. All these big green tractors are coming out, and not a one of them has gotten close to the international yet. You know how you can tell who the international fans are here today at Bowling Green? They're the ones sitting with a big smile on their face right now. So far, anyway, another John Deere will try it. This is Mike Linder out of Edison, Ohio. Got to notice the sun's starting to come out now. That can hurt, hurt or help the track. Boy, 
not even close, but this is going to put him in second place for the moment at 274 feet, 9 inches. I'm going to wait until the track's going to get better. With the sun coming out, it'll have a tendency to dry it out. can help or hurt. Let's find out what's going to happen. It definitely helped this vehicle. The more tractors that come out, the more unbelievable shotgun red pull a little earlier looks. This is the second best in this round, and it's still 25 feet short of what John Wilkins did in Shotgun Red. Another big green John Deere, Soup Lion Express, Randy Campbell from Homeworth, Ohio. Randy watching patiently as he sets on the starting line. If you could only see the driver's eyes right now, they're watching all these gauges. It's almost like watching a miniature tennis game. Their eyes are going from left to right to left to right to left to right, waiting for everything to get just right. When all the gauges are straight up and down at 12 o'clock, the smoke's black, now it's time to go. Line Express. All the John Deere's have their weight set just about the same, Scott. They'll roll out about 50 feet and tippy toe it up. And they're all stopping at about the same position on the track. Somebody needs to do something different. They're going to have to go the other way because this way not working for the green. 269 feet 6 inches. Again, well short, make the 269 feet 9 inches still. Nowhere near the distance it would take to force another pull-off with John Wilkins and Shotgun Red. Notice the same characteristics of all of them. They'll come out a little bit and then pick the front end up. Now this tractor held it down a little bit longer than the other people. But what gets me is they're all getting drilled by that sled at about the same mile marker. Gary Radinsky's up next. He'll bring the workhorse out of Hanshire, Illinois, and hook to the sled once again. Another John Deere trying that big bat international sitting up front. You know, we're not overplaying this John Deere and international thing. If you're in the agriculture industry, I guarantee you, you're pulling for one of them. If you like red, you're grinning. If you like green, you're seeing red. You better get going because one by one, they're eliminating themselves today at Bowling Green. Now, in order to get this far, you got to remember, credit where credit is due. They've already made one full pull. Now, it's rope a dope time. A huge pull off 16 tractors, and Radinsky uh, isn't getting there at all. He's not even close. The distance is going to come in under 260 feet. It'll be 257 and 2 inches. So the workhorse will finish well back in the pack. Boy, isn't that a whooping? You get a pull, a full pull your first time around, and you're not even going to finish in the top ten. What's interesting to me is what's happening now. All these guys are going down in about the same area. They're starting to dig holes in the track, and that hurts the guy behind them. Another green tractor goes down to shotgun red. Army Armstrong is going to talk to Gary Radinsky, see if he can find out what's going on in the John Deere camp. All right, Gary, a 257 run, but you guys had these red tractors outnumbered all to one, and then all of a sudden we go to pull off and they're thumping you. What's the deal? Well, they got a little better tire speed than what we got, and it makes a whole world of difference in a pull off. That's the word from Gary Radinsky and Shotgun Red, the international, still on top of the John Deere. He's got a full pull. Mike Linder, second for the 25 feet short. The cruising mule next up as finally we get something other than a John Deere to try and go after Shotgun Red. The Shotgun Red is just thumping everybody so far. Let's see what this one's going to do. A little bit late on the turn. I'm looking at this. He's trying to put the horsepower down. on him and now the green tractors at least have one red tractor they were able to take care of in this pull off the cruising mule at 267 and three inches one well, in the middle of the track it looks like he was going to come along that's not the case the happening continues at bowling green everybody's having a great time this afternoon they're part of history over 20 years this event's been going on but today the big question is can't anybody catch the international well now you folks who are 
loyally lined up with the Massey Ferguson camp have been tired of hearing us talk about international and about John Deere. Here's your chance to stand up and holler because the Massey is coming out. It's sweet, sweet music. And Gary Hendrickson from Tuscola, Illinois. Talk about an interesting individual. During the week, he teaches music. On the weekend, he plays the church choir. He took a weekend off to come pulling. Thus the name, sweet, sweet music. He's got to get another full pull to force another pull-off because John Wilkins in Shotgun Red has taken it out on successive passes. He got to be ready to pump him 88 right now. If he's going to do it, he's got his work cut out for him. Word in the pit area, this guy could be a player. That's the word we're getting. The rest of the drivers are coming up. You notice the cleats on the tires. Everybody's got their own idea. Sweet, sweet music. Hopes to make that sweet sound right now as he takes it down the track. You can almost feel the crowd. They know something can happen here. They know this guy. These people follow the sport. The black smoke around the driver's feet, that clutch gun. He's slipping the clutch out. It's working for him, son. It's not going to be anywhere near a full pull, but it may put him in second. Let's wait for the distance on Sweet Sweet Music. It comes in 276 and 4 inches, so the Massey goes into second behind the International. Wow. What? Well, the, the, the other drive, you could tell there was something going down when he went to the sled. These other guys knew that he could be a player, and he proved it right there. What I'm getting at, green is what the color they have today in Bowling Green, Scott. It's a lead belonging to an international, and now the second place spot to the Massey Ferguson of Gary Hendrickson. Army Armstrong working his way over to talk to now the man who sits number two. In the first round, everything really looked good for you. You come back. You seem to have this second round figured out to pull out, and then you had to take the break, and it, that looked like it killed you. Uh, the track isn't near as good now. The only way you can do is pick your front end up, and when you do that, this track, you're going to go to the side. All the other drivers that have pulled in front of you in this pull-off were standing at the end. When you came down, they said, oh, he's going. When you take the break, every one of them smiled like a big Cheshire cat. That really hammers you, huh? It really does. It's, you know, it's 10 foot every time you touch the brakes, and I hit them twice. It is time to see my old pal Cruncher as we head for the Crunch of the Week. Cruncher here. This Crunch of the Week ain't a pretty sight. Brought to you by Galoo, makers of micro machines and tough tracks vehicles. Are you tough enough for tough tracks? Army, our Crunch of the Week, one of the most famous sights in all of tractor pulling. 1988 in Memphis. Watch this. Tell you what, Scott, this day I was scared. Mark Gettinger has his block explode completely, ripped in half. An incredible moment in the history of tractor pulling from 1988 on the crunch of the week. With just two to go in this pull-off at the National Tractor Pulling Championship, Shotgun Red continues to lead. Sneaky Snake will now come out to go after him. This is John Lorenz out of Fresno, Ohio. John's actually the father-in-law of the leader. He loves nothing better to put him away. Sneaky Snake working the right side. John, look at this. These guys have got it figured out. John Lorenz and the Sneaky Snake almost gets it out of there. He almost forced another pull-off. 292 feet, 4 inches. So they'll enjoy the family reunion because son-in-law leads and father-in-law sits second. Again, John Lorenz with an impressive pull, the sneaky snake. This guy's been around a long time. He knew exactly what it would take to do the job. Like you say, the family reunion this year will be a lot happier than it has been in the past. Well, and the, the guys following the green and bowling green have just turned their back on this mess. Well, here comes the lovely lady of tractor pulling, Sue Ellen Oswald, the Keystone Cop, the final puller in the pull-off. Sue Ellen can definitely be a, a player in this thing. She and her husband, now Sue Ellen gets a lot of attention being a, a Pennsylvania State police officer and everything, but her husband is a tremendous part of this organization. She gives a lot of credit to him, but right now, his job's over. It's completely up to Sue Ellen. Now, you know, the other half of what you might call the big two in this sport is the indoor championship in Louisville's Freedom Hall, the National Farm Machinery Show. Sue Ellen won that class this year. Can she back it up, make it a double? We'll find out here at the National Tractor Pulling Championship in Bowling Green. Let's just then watch it. Not going to do it, Scott. No, not even close. 
close. So Sue Ellen, obviously very disappointed with that pull that comes in at 252 feet, three inches. Shotgun Red wins it. John Wilkins takes it home from Bowling Green, Ohio at the National Tractor Pulling Championship.